gonna take a step back and just do a documentation of this watercolor piece. It's one of my two explorers characters. I'm not gonna get much into who they are and what they are about, but I want to make a story about them at some point when I've developed them a bit more. Anyway, let's get into this. So I started by masking off some of the part, which I wanted to remain white for later layering. And then I went and mixed some sepia with blue, just to get this grayish color for the rocks. I left the edges white to leave room for later highlights. It was a very relaxing part, just blocking in big areas of gray washes. For ev and for every layer I went into the painting, I mixed a bit more blue into the gray, just to give this sort of depth depth perspective, <laughs> also mixing in some other softer browns to give the different rocks some individual character. Uh, the best thing about the white edges was that I could just paint a big object and then move right on with one that was right beside it, you know, so I didn't have to wait for the different parts to dry. Before I go on, i just like to say Sorry for all the jump cuts coming up in this video. This painting was started last Sunday on my new camera and I had to leave it during the work hours. So this has taken me all week to film. And also the SD card and camera have space and battery limitations that was a bit annoying. But I came through it and I have definitely learned a few things. Around here, I got to the part of the background that was outside of the cave, so I went in and mixed a bit more bluish green into the grey. The green was kind of a mixed idea since it made the areas far away a bit more vibrant. Um, this part though is in between days, so I forgot where I was going and mixed in some water browns. Um, because, hey, sand, uh, yeah, that did not exactly work to start with, but then again, I had a very, it had a very interesting effect near the end of the painting, after some other washes, but we'll get into that much later. Here I'm starting to mix the blue for the open waters. I believe I made a big puddle of ultramarine blue and then mixed in some of the stone turquoise grey. The idea for the watercolor to be present in the rocks so it looked like they were in the water and not in front of it. And pause. Time for the masking fluid to come off. <laughs> In reality, it probably should have stayed on for a bit longer, but this also marks the three day marker of filming. And I've experienced that if you leave masking fluid on for the paper for much longer than three days, it um, kind of glues itself to the paper, and that would be very, very bad. Um, though to be fair, it could have been an interesting look for the areas, but it wasn't exactly what I was going for. So time to focus a bit on the foreground. I went in and darkened the rocks in the foreground, this time with a bit more warm grey. This grey I believe is the same mix as earlier, but with a bit of burnt umber mixed in just to give the foreground dimension a much stronger effect. I also color over the areas of the rock that used to be behind the masking fluid, just letting the color come through but still keeping the area much brighter. And thus it's time for the moss. As you can see, I started with brown before mixing in the sap green just to give it a more desaturated look. And again, I'm just blocking in areas. This time, however, because moss has a more fluffy texture than the rocks, I didn't do the white edges. Uh, this helps to differentiate the textures a bit. I 
mix in some emerald green for the seaweed coming up in a bit and just to give them a much different tone from the moss but still working in the uh, on the same foundation of color and here i'm just going in to darken the water a bit and give the bottom area uh, a more darkish greenish tone then further up towards the surface and afterwards I'm going in with the moss again and adding some uh, some light shading to the moss trying to work in some texture and um, this time just keeping a bit away from the edges but with a much more raw edge than on the rocks uh, the parts seen through the bubbles are just kept loosely away from the edges to give it a uh, this ghostly transparent look though apart from that the only thing I did was mix in a bit more water to dilute the colors uh, seep through the bubbles I figured since all the background areas with the dead objects was in such cold desaturated colors I wanted the creatures to pop so I mixed some yellow deep with red light to get this really nice deep orange for the starfish and the details on the uh, what's it called dining diving dining <laughs> diving suit details and time to do the characters and let me say I have a hard time doing soft gradients when trying not to touch the edges of the characters also having these bright saturated colors set for the characters made them really stand out from the setting. Looking back I could have given them a soft translucent layer on top just to incorpor incorporate them a bit more. Uh, on her face I went and left a lot of areas white just to make the lighting and shading a whole lot more dramatic. Um, and for her skin I used some burnt sienna, a bit of yellow deep and a tiny tiny drop of red light and cobalt blue. I feel the mix of pigments make for some really playful tone shifts in, uh, in lighter skin. I also go in and darken the water some more. The bottom is more greenish blue and then I gradually work it into an ultramarine. And now we come to the part where I have no idea what to talk about when it comes to this painting. Um, I'm just really blocking in colors and working on some details. So I'll just take a moment to ask you how you like this kind of detailed commentary. Um, I would really love to know. Uh, is it helping you understand my process more in any way? I, I do know it's helping me. It makes me reflect a whole lot more on what I'm doing in the painting, what mistakes I make and forces me to think about what I can do to either rectify the mistakes or even use them to later advantages. Uh, this voiceover however does take a lot more work and while I do want to do this more, I would like to know your thoughts on it. I would also like to make some better room so you can actually see me mixing the colors I'm talking about. But then again, to be honest, this is mostly just a way for me to study my workflow and for criti critiques to be more technique oriented than anything else. Um, critiques is a subject I'd really like to make a video about, but uh, right now all I want to say is that it's really hard to critique something you do not know how it was made. If you know the thought process behind something, you have a much better chance of understanding the choices and give critique to what can be done differently. So here I'm just going in with a darker, more saturated green for the moss, shading and giving it some more texture. I also forgot to <laughs> soften the spots on the starfish before the paint dried. So I'm going in just with water and working the dried up dark spots into the orange of the starfish. 
and right here. I have also realized that I painted the neck part of her bodysuit the color of her skin. So I do price myself lucky that I'm going to cover up that part with shading. This makes the overall color seem much different and more green than the rest of the suit and that is a bummer. Now on the suit I left a very aggressive highlight just to give it a uh, more more shine to it, trying my very best to work with the contours of her body. This jump cut is one of the more annoying ones, but I didn't realize the camera was up while I put some heavy shadows on the parts bathed in light. I then washed the entire area with a yellow, and then I went and put that yellow into all the white edges of the foreground rocks. I then mixed a very transparent blue and washed over the background parts in sections, working from the furthest away all the way up to the closest parts. This gave the different colors of the layers in the background a much more uniform hue. Looking back though, I wish I had made the blue much darker or gone over the background outside of the cave area once more just to darken it up even further. It would have helped differentiate the background much much more and I think it would have worked a lot better. And now it's time for the heavy shadows. Oh, I love this part of watercolor painting because it can just really make a huge difference. Also, it looks like you ruined everything when laying down the shadows, but when it dries, it just lightens a bit and the colors are given this kind of filter, making the shadows even more effective. So just don't be scared of shading an extra dark. It will just give it this extra pop what I usually do is create a cold purplish shade of grey for the shadows, but since this is underwater, I went and used the rock grey mixed with some ultramarine. And to get this uniformity throughout the painting, I used the same color for all of my deep heavy shadows. And since the water watercolor transparency will make the original tone show through, giving each area its own unique shadow color. This however also made me realize how much she disappears into the background with her entire outfit being nearly the same colors as the background. So I just went over the entirety of her outfit with the, the yellow just to give her a warmer tint. Um, also giving the areas of her skin towards the light a dash of the same yellow. And then I went, just went on with the dark shadows. And now we're almost done. I'm gonna dress this. So this is the part where I'm supposed to take a huge step back and look at the painting with completely new eyes. But I forgot. Yeah, this had been a week underway and I was so ready to move on. So I went ahead ahead and was a silly fish. Had I given myself the time, I would have gone over the background with a dark blue. Once again, just to differentiate the midground and the foreground a whole lot more. But I'm still practicing how much I can allow myself to darken the background and who wants to bet that my next try is gonna leave me with a way too dark background. But Hey, that's the pain and wonder of becoming better, am I right? It's supposed to be a journey, and I don't really know about you, but I have yet to unlock fast travel. Oop, sorry about the jankiness. I'm also still learning how a tripod works, and I'll try for the movements to be a lot more smooth, but thus far, all, all I have is a janky tripod. So I'd like to know if you like the panning or if I should just go ahead and jump cut to the details. And all in all, I think this turned out great and I like how this entire video turned out, even if there were, has been a few jumps and, and mistakes. But I've learned a lot, both about my new camera, about filming and especially also how I personally watercolor. Ooh, starfish! <laughs>
I'd also like to finish up by saying that I'd forgotten how much I love these characters and I need to make some more from their adventures. Although, I have no idea what they are called apart from them being my my two and little explorers. So let me know if you have an idea or just really want to share some techniques. Um, anyway, I'm gonna be off now. So yeah, you have fun, take care and bye.